In this example, we're going to analyze the same truss that we did previously with the incline tip kip load. However, we're going to compute the reactions in a different manner. Instead of doing this with mathematics by breaking the 10 kip load into horizontal and vertical components, we're going to analyze it by graphics. We do this by recognizing that the balance of moments always is equal to zero for the entire system. What that means is that when we project the lines of action of all forces and reactions on a structure, they come together at one single point. So we know that the vertical reaction on the right-hand side is indeed vertical because it's a roller support. From the previous analysis, we know that the left-hand support has both a vertical component and a horizontal component. But initially, we don't know what the angle is. Neither do we know the magnitude. So it's somewhere in between here. We can determine the angle by projecting the lines of actions of the applied force and the known reaction. So if we take the 10 kip force, its line of action is like this. The right-hand reaction has a line of action that looks like this. And those two intersect at a point. Those two intersecting lines are enough to define the point where all forces come together, meaning that the unknown angle of the right-hand reaction must also pass through that point. So if we take a line that passes through the right-hand support, left-hand support, and through this, two, this point that was determined by projecting these two forces here, we get a line of action passing through that point and through the support telling us that this is the angle that our right hand, left hand reaction passes through. Now from this we can directly construct our force polygon. We haven't done any mathematics yet. So unlike the previous one, we don't have two components to work with on the left hand side. We just have the one force, meaning that we don't have an additional letter. We just have the space between the left-hand support and the 10 kip force, we call A. The space between the 10 kip force and the right-hand reaction, we call B. And the space between the right-hand reaction and the left-hand reaction, we call C. So in that sense, it's very much like the first problem where we had the vertical force acting. So from this, we can construct our force polygon. And we'll again use the scale of 1 to 30. In other words, 1 inch equals 3 kips. Begin by transferring our forces, transferring the angles rather. That's the line of action of the original force, 10 kips. We scale its magnitude. So we go from point A to B. Magnitude is 10 kips. The right-hand reaction is vertical. That's all we know to begin with. We don't have magnitude yet. So point C lies somewhere along this line. But now we know the angle that the left-hand reaction is acting. And it's going between point C and A. So we've established point A. Point C lies along this line. So 
So we go from A until we intersect the vertical line BC. So similarly to when we're doing the member forces, when we project lines we have A1 and B1 sharing one in common. Similarly, we have BC and AC sharing C in common. So BC is vertical, AC is at this angle, they have to intersect at C. Now these dimensions are the magnitudes of our reactions. So we can see that BC comes out to 3.5, 3.6, about 3.7 kips. Then our sloping vector CA magnitude is just about 7 kips. Now, if we were to go back to the previous diagram, initially it may look like it's different, but in reality it's not, because we do have a line that we could connect from C to A. Here. And if we were to scale that line, we can see the distance is 7 kips. Notice this triangle here. That triangle is the vector equilibrium, two components and one resultant for the left hand side. So in other words, if we were to translate this into the same diagram, we would have a vertical and a horizontal component. Then we would have a C and a D, and then ignore the sloping one here, so D is this range in here, and then a D and an A. So CD is vertical, DA is horizontal, a has to intersect at D, so here's point D. And thereby we get our components, 5 kips, and 5 kips if we scale this way. And now you see we have exactly the same diagram. These are the lines for the member forces, but for the reactions, it's just this triangle here. So by this means, when we have an inclined load, we can find the reaction without even doing any mathematics. It's pretty neat.